Okay, I'm here. <laughs> you have welcomed me with all your heart, isn't it? Thank you so much, so much. So much. I've come here from far away, far, far, far away, <laughs> to share with you this thing that holds us together. In the spirit of Ubuntu, the philosophy of practice of Africa, I am because you are, not because I think like Descartes said, I am because you are. Think about it. It means that my problems are yours. Your joys are mine also. In that spirit, I invite you to share with me both my pains and joys, both my aspirations and my struggles. Okay? Thank you. Uh, now, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. This is me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the South African Research Chairs Initiative is a strategically focused knowledge and human resource intervention into the South African higher education systems. That means that I'm not just a professor. No. No, 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 no. I deal with nat national questions. Eh? I raise awareness and develop strategic um, uh, codes which can make the academy transform to the national question. You get me? Hmm? So <laughs> uh, I'm part of this strategic intervention which is funded by the Parliament of South Africa through the Ministry of Science and Technology. The University of South Africa hosts me, but I'm not part of them. Mm? You get me? So mm. you can read the mandate. Huh? <laughs> Advanced frontiers of knowledge. Huh? Advanced frontiers of knowledge. That means that I do, I do not go around revolving the same things over and over and no, 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 no. I'm supposed to advance the frontiers. <laughs> you get me? Mm. Mm. So this is UNISA, mm? the biggest in, in university in Africa and so on. What are my goals? One, to make transdisciplinary a core facet in leadership building. Offer robust expositions of the constitutive, not regulatory rules and norms that control current thinking and practice. It represents an epistemology of hope. Hope that probes the future and thereby illuminates the possibilities of the present. Knowing that sometimes the entities that perform the functions and wield authority 
are not actually persons like pilots or doctors, but words. So I've gathered fellows of my chair, 40 of them. I told you about it in our conversations and so on. And combine them with circuits of elders and the VCs of the universities into a discourse coalition to bring about change. Hmm? So, one, the context. <coughs> As a people, we know that no community is complete without the other. No society is complete in itself. The other opens us, enlarges us. Without the otherness of the other, the self is incomplete and even vulnerable. What is true of society is true of knowledge. No knowledge is complete in itself. No knowledge is complete without dreams of the other. Hospitality, reciprocity, generosity, plurality. Without these, no commons of knowledge is possible. And yet, we know that the prevailing and dominating world views that surrounds us today and which we are all compelled to respond to is one that is narrow in its vision, exclusive and detached in relating to the total environment, analytical and deductive in its perception and thinking, linear in its doing, hierarchical and competitive in its management of the field of activity. The painful fact in the name of Ubuntu, I ask you to share with me this painful fact. The error of the empire, weak and strong at the same time, declared Africa to have nothing, nothing, nothing. Its knowledge systems were irrelevant, we were unsuited for the modern world. The imperial, twisted, parochial methodologies taught us in Africa that a handful of countries in Europe dominated all thoughts and actions and naturally set the pattern for the world. Really, really, really. They mangled Darwin's theories of evolution into a populist, racist, political narrative of progress and race. 
And they used it to justify their untold violence on Africa. Saying all the, uh, uh, all the while that it was a manifestation of scientific destiny. So, they intentionally hated everything, 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 from table manners and dress codes to economic methods to political philosophy to governmental administration to notions of civilizational truth and destiny. Thanks to the pen of Herbert Spencer's survival of the fittest, suddenly public debate in Europe was full of scientific truisms that were neither scientific nor true. No true. We had social Darwinism, which helped to create more empire uh, mythologies than any other. From Europe to here, hmm? huh? the combined narratives ruled Africa up to now. Europeans insisted that their principles in particular were universal. Hello, you know nothing. It is only us we who know, isn't it? Read it. Their narrative of history, cuisine, of civilization, of fashion, spread wide during the violence of colonialism, all apparently universal. Educational curricula were filled with this as absurdities. They then went to mount attacks on indigenous cultures and peoples all over the world. And demean them by banning, by banning their languages cultures and rituals, leaving only the Western rituals, cultures. It is not funny. It is not funny, isn't it? Really, it is not funny. In the name of Ubuntu, it is not funny.